fans, Dried Fury, Jungle Prowlers, Hootay Nation, any other group out there I might forget, I'm Forever Bengals. Uh, we're going to talk about the upcoming matchup between the Bengals and the Vikings. Uh, Vikings, they took a beating against the Arizona Cardinals. Can the Bengals, you know, give them the same type of beating? I'd like to think we can. Um, the teams that beat the uh, Vikings, the Pittsburgh Steelers, now I know that they got uh, they got lucky. You know, Pittsburgh Steelers, they had a bad call that negated a touchdown, which caused the Vikings to lose the game. That, that's my belief. Uh, it was just a very bad call. They called tripping when they shouldn't have. But, you know, the Steelers beat the Vikings, you know. And uh, the Ravens, they miss a field goal, an easy field goal, which would have given them the win over the Vikings. However, uh, you know, and you got you look at that, and then you look at how Cincinnati had played against the Viking, well, played against those teams, and we actually swept those teams. We played them twice and beat them twice. Um, and so you have to kind of like the way Cincinnati matches up, since we play a similar type, uh, style of football as Pittsburgh and Baltimore. Um, now, a lot of people keep talking about our past game, and they don't think we have what it takes to throw the ball anymore. They they talk about the play calling and Palmer's accuracy and everything. Well, here's what I have to say about that. Now, Palmer, I think he's accurate when he throws the ball. He puts the ball usually where he wants to put it. And sometimes the receivers, there's a miscommunication. There's a lot of things. And this is what Burkowski's trying to say. He's not trying to put the blame on any one thing. He's saying it's a bunch of things. Now, with Palmer, though, I do want to say this. He's killing me with his play-action pass, with his play fakes. Whenever, uh, if you're a defender and you see him running out with both hands on the ball, you know it's going to be a pass, so you just drop back in coverage. If you see him running out with one hand on the ball, then you know it is a uh, run, so you start stacking the box. You run forward to the uh, to the football. We need to work on Carson Palmer and and that fundamentality where we keep him. Uh, we tell him you put the ball inside. Uh, you know you uh, sometimes maybe when it looks like you're going to put the ball inside, you pull it back out and then you throw the ball. Um, or if you run with both hands, you sometimes you actually put it in to the uh, running back's gut and let him have it. Because right now we're not we're not surprising anybody. We're not catching anybody off guard. We're not surprise. Uh, you know, it's not a uh, great fake. You know, it's not fooling anyone. So uh, he needs to work on that. Another thing is his fundamentals. When he first came into the league, he would bring the ball up to his ear and release it, just up and gone. They, I remember people saying that it was a, one of his uh, great attributes is that he would have such a fast release on the ball. He'd bring it up and just release it. Now he brings the ball up behind him, then to his ear. You know, he goes through this huge throwing motion. Now, I'm not sure if that's because of his elbow. Maybe he feels a little bit uh, weak. He says it's fine, so I believe him when he says it's fine. Or if that's just sloppy play by the quarterback. But, you know, get back to this, Palmer. You know, get back to bringing it up to your ear and then throwing it. Now, if you're really trying to get it downfield and you're trying to heave um, a huge, huge pass, maybe, yeah, I could see the cocking back and putting your whole body into it. But, you know, when you're just trying to do a short pass, don't bring it back here, you know. Just bring it up to your ear and release it. Uh, and that's why he's had those two strip fumbles in the Oakland and the Lions game because he brings the ball back behind his head and not up to his ear. Uh Another, uh, another thing is he doesn't utilize the pump fake. He brings the ball up and then right back down. 
he's not uh, he, he does this and then right right back down it's not a pump fake you know when I see a pump fake this is why I see a pump fake up to his ear boom and then uh, you know for of uh, complete forward motion and then turn and, and unload he doesn't do that he'll up down up down and then he's not fooling anyone and he'll keep holding and keep looking so he doesn't utilize the tools that other quarterbacks utilize when it, in, in regards to pump fake. Now, the Vikings. Uh, offensively, no one seems to be hurt. Brett Favre's getting up there in years, but he's still playing like he's 20 years old. Uh, defensively, though, E.J. Henderson, they're, uh, one of their better linebackers, he's out. That's going to help us with uh, with moving the ball. And their secondary is depleted. You know, they keep losing more and more cornerbacks as the uh, weeks progress. So if we did have to air the ball out, knowing that we have players like Chad Ochocinco, Lavernius Coles, and uh, Andre Caldwell, I feel more confident in us actually getting the air game going against that. Um, as far as running the ball, Vikings are ranked number three in, uh, in rush defense, so I think running the ball straight up the gut isn't maybe the way to go. I think we need to beat them on the edge like Arizona did. Arizona seemed to have a lot of momentum, uh, a lot of success running the ball off the edge. And I think they were uh, they ran to the opposite side that Jared Allen was on. I, I don't know somebody who maybe have the, if they have that game, uh, DVR could look it up and, and take a look at it and tell me what, what they saw. But, you know... Uh, other than running up the middle, I think we could have uh, some success in running to the outside edges, especially with our unbalanced line. I do want to see us run up the middle a couple times because uh, Kyle Cook, he is, uh, him and Mathis uh, slash Livings and Bobby Williams, they were able to hold up some of the best def uh, defensive tackles in the league in Baltimore and Pittsburgh. They did it twice. Uh, so I'd like to see how they handled the Williams boys. So... Uh, <clears throat> maybe a couple run up the gut type uh, plays just to see what uh, if it can get us anything. If not, then start working the edge and start working the air game. Uh, that will be key to uh, beating the Vikings, in my opinion. So, uh, yeah, that's what I kind of see. Uh, the Vikings, they can win. I'm not going to say that, uh, that we're going to go in there and beat them uh, because we beat Pittsburgh and Pittsburgh beat them. I'm not going to say that, but I will say that since we play a similar style of football of Pit, uh, the way Pittsburgh plays and we play a similar style of football of Baltimore, that we match up well against the Vikings. And I see this as being a game that will be a lot closer than a lot of people think. And I think I can actually see it being a Bengal victory, which will shock a lot of people. And, it might, uh, and I can actually see some of the experts when they do their pick, some of them picking the Bengals, some of them picking the Vikings because both teams right now um, they need the win uh, especially Cincinnati one more win and we clinch the division um, so we'll see uh, also if we beat the uh, Vikings that puts us undefeated in the north this year we would have beaten the AFC North and the NFC North this year if we beat the Vikings so talk about a complete sweep of the north and and, you know, you could actually say that we are the king of, uh, kings of the North and leaders of the full North in the NFL if, uh, if we beat the Vikings. If the Vikings beat us, then, you know, you'd have to look at who has the better record and stuff like that. And I think Cincinnati still owns that. I know the uh, Vikings have swept the North on the NFC side, but they've lost to Pittsburgh on the AFC side. So, and who knows, they might actually have, uh, have, have us beat an overall record in, in the North, but... All in all, it's it'll be a fun game to watch, good game to watch. And uh, a friend of mine, Andy, he is a Vikings fan, so I'm sure he's going to be letting me have it if the Vikings do well. But we'll see. Uh, here's to a good game. Who day?